OK, so we're going to solve this problem to do with remainders when we divide a polynomial by a linear or a quadratic term. I think this is a really interesting problem because at a glance it doesn't seem like there's enough information to solve this. We certainly can't find out what polynomial f of x actually is. So all we know about f of x here is that it's a real valued polynomial and we have this information about the remainders when we divide by certain linear terms here. So when we divide by x minus 2, what this really means is we're trying to factorise f of x as x minus 2 times some other polynomial, let's call this g of x. But we can't do this because x minus 2 doesn't actually go into f of x and we get a remainder plus 9. So this is how you should interpret this first statement. And similarly for the second one, if we try and factor in x plus 1, this doesn't work. We get x plus 1 times, let's call this h of x now, and then we get a remainder plus 3. So x plus 1 doesn't go into f of x, we get this remainder plus 3. And now the problem here is when we divide f of x by this quadratic, so we want to write f of x as this quadratic, x squared minus x minus 2 times, let's call this q of x, we want to know what the remainder is when we try and divide by this quadratic. And the most useful tool we're going to use here to solve this problem is called the remainder theorem. And the remainder theorem, I think, is quite intuitive when presented in the right way. And this is telling us that if you have the statement f of a equals r, so this is equivalent to saying that f of x, when we divide this by the factor x minus a, this has remainder r. And we'll just see why this is true before we start using the remainder theorem. So if you imagine we try and divide by x minus a, so we write f of x as x minus a multiplied by some other polynomial we'll call qx, and then we get some remainder r. So let's just see what happens if we substitute a into our function in place of x. So we get f of a equals, well, we've just got a minus a, which is 0, so this term all vanishes times q of a plus r, so then we do indeed get just f of a equals r. So you can see that f of a equals r is equivalent to having a remainder r when we divide our function by x minus a. And this is also related to the factor theorem. So if we didn't get a remainder, this would tell us that we had a factor. So this is exactly how if f of a equals 0, then x minus a is a factor of our function f. So now back to our problem. We can use the remainder theorem to extract some more information out of this problem. So we know that when we divide by x minus 2, we've got a remainder of 9. And the remainder theorem now tells us that f of 2 must be equal to 9. And similarly here, when we divide by x plus 1, we get a remainder of 3. So the remainder theorem tells us that f of negative 1 is 3. But now things get interesting when we divide by a quadratic. So first of all, you may have spotted that this quadratic, when we factorise this, we can write it as x squared minus x minus 2 equals x minus 2 times x plus 1. And this is crucial, actually, to being able to solve this problem. When we factorise this, our two linear terms are exactly the linear terms that we've divided by. So now when we want to divide f of x by this quadratic term, we're effectively looking for f of x is equal to this quadratic. So let me just write this in the factorised form like this, times some polynomial q of x, and we've got plus a remainder term. But then when we're dividing by a quadratic, you can think of this as choosing a polynomial q of x so that we make all of the coefficients match with our coefficients in the polynomial f of x. But the problem now is our remainder isn't just a constant, it could actually be a linear function. So we could choose q of x to get all of our powers of x coefficients all the way down to x squared. We can make them match up. But then because this is being multiplied by a quadratic, we'll still have potentially some ax plus b, so x to the power of 1 and a constant term which don't necessarily match up. So this is our idea of what the remainder means when you divide by a quadratic. So now we can substitute in x is 2 and use this fact that f of 2 is 9. So substituting in x is 2, we get 9 equals... Then all of this term is actually just 0, because we've got 2 minus 2 there. So we just get 9 is equal to a times 2 plus b. So we'll write this as 2a plus b. And similarly, using this information that f of negative 1 is 3, we can write f of negative 1 is 3, substituting in negative 1, all of this term disappears again, it just becomes 0, because x plus 1 is 0 there, and then we've got a times negative 1 plus b, so we'll write this negative a plus b. So now we've just got a pair of simultaneous equations to solve, so we could do the first equation minus the second equation, for example, 
would give us 6 equals 3a. So we see then that a is equal to 2. Then we can substitute this back into either equation and we'd get b equals 5. So this is telling us then that the remainder, when we divide f of x by this quadratic, remember this is ax plus b, so the remainder is just going to be 2x plus 5 when we divide our polynomial f by this quadratic.